Welcome back to the party, everyone. It's a Dolls Holiday Celebration. We're here with Michael Canadas. Hi, Rachel. Hi, Ruby Lane. Hi. We're here at the Grovian Doll Museum, back for another round of wonderful seminars for you guys to learn, share, and love. So we are going to learn about something I don't know much about, so I am very excited about this one. It's called Victorian Whimsies. Michael, what is a whimsy? Well, first of all, welcome, everyone. But I, first of all, I should tell your audience that we're in Pacific Grove, California, and we, um, we're we in a 1902 building, which is not necessarily in this town that old, but Pacific Grove, California, which was a Methodist retreat and a Chautauqua, um, a Chautauqua setup, we have more Victorians per capita than anywhere else in the country. Wow. So we've got, we know about Victoriana, so yes. <laughs> and uh, one of the reasons we have um, so many Victorians is that, you know, we had the Great Depression and no one really had any money to tear down buildings, so they managed to survive. So we do know quite a bit about Victoriana and uh, part of the uh, Victorian whimsies is actually a very big, um, subject matter. It can be many things. It could also be called parlor art. So these are the things that you would have in your parlor, the place that you entertained. Today, people entertain in their kitchen. It's all about the kitchen. In the 19th century, the lady did not go, lady of the house did not even go into the kitchen unless she was cooking. And uh, But a good, good portion of middle-class people had cooks. So the heart of the home was in the parlor. So in the parlor is where you would display your parlor art. So I'm gonna, we have it in the Grove and we're lucky to have this fabulous. Oh my goodness. Tableau of a parlor. And when you look at, the first time I looked at the painting, I thought it had some damage. But then as you study it, you realize this is by the way, a little boy. The little boy has gotten into the coal scuttle. <gasps> so all that, all these spots, are coal, but you can see the idealized Victorian parlor. He's got his uh, teething ring with the coral, which was good luck. He's got his balls, uh, but he's very mischievous. Notice the people that are out there that collect lace. All the lace is beautifully um, represented. And of course, you've got your nice little fireplace going. So it would be in rooms like this that you would find things like this that are on the table. This is So incredible. I think we should give them a, a pan we'll give a little pan of it, and then we'll, we'll go and we'll go and we'll talk. If you guys are tuning in, we are here at the Grovian for our Dolly holiday celebration. If you're tuning in, share the video so more people can hop on. We're giving you a little pan of this table, and then we're gonna go in deep. This is our second seminar of the day, and we're so excited. I think I should start with really, I mean, I think a lot of the people that are tuning in uh, are of course doll collectors. And dolls were of course for children to play with, but they were also a decorative item at that period in time. And even until really the 1930s, mm -hmm. um, dolls were used as decorations in homes. So if you happen to be a lady that loved a beautiful doll, you didn't have a child, you could buy a beautiful doll like this and by putting it in a dome, it becomes parlor art, something that your friends could come and look at, that you had a Parisian doll. And of course, they loved color. People don't realize that the Victorians really, really loved color. That purple and so you've got so that rich. purple, a very um, you know, rich color. So this is not something that, it would not be unusual to have a doll in the parlor. And then we have some dolls that were you know that we're a absolutely, that could, of course, be a play doll. This uh, Joan of Arc would not be a play doll. This would have been something that would be very devotional, um, someone who practiced, practices Catholicism and loved, um, you know, the whole story of jo Joan of Arc and how she saved France. This would not be a toy. This would be a decorative item in the parlor, would have been a, an expensive item, so it would be in a, in a private place. Whimsies are also too, I know we showed this 
before, but I'm going to show it again. Whimsies to me also are something that is, it appears to be, oh, a doll head with a pretty hat, but then you open it up and it's something totally different. Just incredible. So that's a little sewing necessary in a little doll's bonnet. And it's a really wonderful piece in mint condition. Look at that red. Oh, just so that amazing. That was a red that they really had that down at that period. And I just love it. It's hard to find it. It's red with a little slight bit of orange to it. And is she a wax over? Or? She is, a, she is a, a wax. A wax. A solid wax. Just beautiful. Which is a miracle that she survived. Absolutely. And then another form of a whimsy to me is when you have something that is a doll chair. Now, if you look at it first, it's a little bone doll chair, probably cow bone. Well, it's not, it's a doll chair, but it's also a pin cushion. So this would be delightful to oh, people wow. that, people always love miniature things, and the Victorians definitely did. And then you have your dolls such as the um, uh, Charity Bazaar Seller. It's not a peddler. This is a society lady that is selling her wares. Um, to raise funds for benevolent causes. And they're kind of wonderful because you could actually use this to see what the type of things were available at that time. And this lady would be expected to have created all this or procured it all for the bazaar. She and this, is just magnificent. And, and this is a very er, early Victorian. And this would have had a, a, a dome and it would have been in the, the um, parlor. We don't have everything with domes because... Sometimes for the public viewing, it you know it makes it a little difficult. So that's in a case where you can get right to it. And there's usually always a saying of some kind. Um, the okay. difference, this would be a saying because this is a charity bazaar seller. And when you have peddlers, which we, sh we should move to peddlers, they're different. In 1842, peddlers had to be licensed to peddle and they had to have um, um, character references in order to peddle. And they went off into uh, remote places and they had to character references. And really by 1842, the Industrial Revolution was full on and we started to have things like malls and department stores and the world changed. So peddlers became something very old fashioned and nostalgic. Mm. And that's why you'll see peddler dolls under glass domes, and they're really Victorian pe uh, uh, parlor art, whimsies. Wonderful. And of course, here's an example, and I'm not gonna wind it because it'll just embarrass me, because here you have a, a miniature singing bird cage, but it's two things. It's a bird cage, and it's also a clock. If you look at the top, it has a dial, and it will oh, tell time. Neat. But if I wound it up, it wouldn't play. It probably play. wouldn't. <laughs> the minute the camera stops, it would. <laughs> and whimsies to me are just like a fun thing too. Like here's a little whistle that is a like a frozen Charlie sitting on a whistle. So it's a doll. It's a it's a, a whistle. It's a toy. Um, and you know, grandma or grandpa could have that in their parlor and let the children play with it. Fun piece. And, and just a neat piece. And that was one of John Noble's items that we're very fortunate to have. And here, here's another piece of parlor art. It's a boxed house. And I'm sure that the people that had this house, miniature house model, it was probably their house. Mm -hmm. So they would have it hanging in their parlor. And it's just kind of a really, really wonderful little piece. We love these kind of untouched items because, you know, the colors perfect, the window panes, everything is as it was. And it's a really wonderful documentation. And then we should move to some, well, if we're gonna talk about wild, these, the lobster we dolls. We just love these lobster dolls. Yes. Proving that a doll can be, it doesn't have to fit a certain mold. No, no. This would, I would put this <laughs> into uh, the category of anamorphic. So it is a, it's an animal with a human, um, um, well, they're in human clothes, so let's just say that's anamorphic. And um, these, these were cr actually created by John Noble, and they were from an original uh, ladies' magazine instruction. 
They and are just they're, fabulous. They're, I should tell you a funny story about lobsters. I had a friend that was an opera singer, and he would sing the song, If Ever I Would Leave You, from Camelot. And he would get to the point where he had to say, your face of a luster that would put gold to flames, or a gold to shame. He would always drop his voice and muddle it. And I said, why do you do that? And he said, I just can't bring myself to say, your face of a lobster. <laughs> and I said, why do you think it, she had a face like a lobster? He said, I thought she was like really red. So <laughs> she has a face like a lobster. A face like a lobster. And that look puts at her. gold to shame. Oh, look, that's hilarious. But they do seem to, I love that they're always bickering. <laughs> so they're always, um, and you know what? Those of you that you know are lucky enough to have Maine lobster, you know, there's, that, that's what you do with the shells. You dry them out and... Um, that's put, the new plan. That's the new plan, yes. Um, <laughs> and, and speaking of wild, here is someone's... This is like quintessential Victorian whimsy parlor art from 1863. And you have a waterfall and a grotto oh and God. a luncheon and Alice in Wonderland and you have donkeys that are, you know, um, tiny little donkeys that the chickens are bigger than the donkeys. Everything is just wild. You have parrots that have flipped upside Angels. down. Angels. I mean, it has everything. And to me, this has so much charm because it's not overbought. They didn't think, oh, mm -hmm. I have to have everything into scale. It was just fun. And you can't look at this without being delighted that, you know, a rose, you know, is, you know, bigger than any doll in the, in the case. And there's lots and lots of goodies. There's we one, have little one, two, swans three, four, in the pond five, and six, seven, a China. Eight, eight little, nine little woodens and uh, frozen Charlies. And the, as you said, the swans and, cake. We have, and we have, look, we've got there's a, fallen, a mouse under the a, table looking at the cake. Yeah. And we have a fallen angel. Um, and then we have grapes that are the size of, you know, uh, basketballs. <laughs> right. So it's it's really just a wonderful just thing. Fun. And in back, the, the portraits are the Prince and Princess of Wales. We have Ava Peron in the window. Uh huh. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And just a wonderful, it's wonderful, just, spectacular. just wild Victoriana. And then, you know, David and I, um, Kay, who's in our audience today asked me, what does David collect? And I said, oh, well, we collect the same things. And I said, but sometimes we don't agree. And these little items came up and I just fell in love with them. And they are dolls that are made out of pipes. So their little heads and their little chins oh, look at are them. pipes. Oh, I love and the, the chins. And the pipes are, and it, her name is, my name is Miss Piper. I'm not a pen wiper. I'm from a shoe the button you have, then just come to me and directly you'll see with what great delight I'll sew them too tight. So it's, these are How absolutely fun. everything that you'd want in a, a Victorian whimsy. It's a, an item that is for, you know, obviously a pipe is for smoking and they've turned it and created them into little dolls. Now these were not for children, these were a, a a, a piece of, you know, um, parlor art. Now, did you Lindsay. both agree on these? No, he still doesn't understand. He still doesn't what, agree. What I what <laughs> I see, it's the charm that I, mm -hmm. I get out of them. That um, we mostly do agree, and and I always have a, a theory that he'll come around. <laughs> what is uh, written on her apron? I think that there's a whole a, a whole saying, and I think it's actually this. Okay. Yeah. So it's actually this. Those are wonderful. In it, so that it's it's. I mean, this was not done yesterday. This is, you know. I mean, let's face it, kids. Some days, this will be our own secret language that no one will be mm -hmm. able to read. Well, we so, hope not. But no, yes. Yes. And um, the other thing I should show you too is I know we saw these in an earlier tour, but. These are Gardner Tall's, but they're all, th these right here are all pin cushions. Yeah. So this is one of my things that I'm 
working on collecting uh, right now. And I just love that, you know, underneath all of this, you know, there is a whole body, but I would never take it apart. You know, it's all stuck up in there because these were inexpensive little dolls. I just shove the whole thing into the, um, into the, the cushion part, but just very, very enchanting. They're not easy to get, but you, you can find them. It's and, wonderful. And I love the idea of things that have to do with sewing and implements. I mean, even though I find sewing to me is work, it's part of what we do, I enjoy collecting the things that, you know, other people in the past had, the wonderful little tools. And this is another little wonderful little piece of, of a parlor art where you have the, all the flowers. Now, these flowers, these people collected these flowers. Mm -hmm. They dried these flowers. Wow. It wasn't that they didn't go to the craft store and pick them all up. They had to do that themselves and then create this little uh, tableau. And then if you see up here, they've used the little wood shavings to create this little um, you know, decorative cornice. And uh, I know that on Facebook, there's someone right now that's showing how to make Christmas trees by using mm. these shavings. And it's not an easy thing to do. So this is just an enchanting little piece of parlor art. Just wonderful. Those combs are so fun. Were they just mainly for a decorative? Mm -hmm. That comb, a comb was a part was of, a... Uh, yes. And a um, uh, funny thing is a lot of times the original owners of the dolls, they would, they would saw them off because if it was interfering mm. with how they were dressing the doll and um, but these have prominent combs and a comb was that mm -hmm. was a big part of these are like circa 1830 that was a big part of uh, your hair reg regiment to have a comb mm -hmm. to keep it all together and here here I can here show you here as an example you know she's missing her comb now you could repair it or I I would imagine that hers was removed and there might have been uh, uh, some headgear there because she could have actually been this one could have been a nun but she has a rosary she has a ro well that wouldn't but if you can see the brown and the mm -hmm. apron and this piece here she could have been a nun so she could have had a whole head headpiece that went with it and I mean look at this tiny that's a pin cushion yeah. I mean that's just, just minuscule Oh, we love her, and look at her. She has like her eyebrows. She almost looks angry. Well, so maybe she is. Yeah. you would be too if people were poking you all the time with <laughs> their pins. Um, also, too, like these sewing items, which are I think are very pretty. Sewing stands, which I could have shown you a showing stand. A lot of those, the sewing, was done in the parlor, so they would have beautiful sewing stands, highly decorative with wonderful implements, tools, and that was a status symbol because uh, what are idle hands or the devil's workshop? So you have to always be doing something no matter who you were. And so for these parlor ladies, sewing was a hobby? Uh, it was, uh, it was a ho well, uh, not necessarily a hobby. In the 19th century, you had to sew to put clothes on your children mm -hmm. and your family's back and create linens and pillowcases and whatnot. But if you didn't have to do that for survival, you still had to be active at all times because idle hands are the devil's workshop. And you were, as a woman, you were judged by your ability to run your home, um, take care of your children, and um, all of your accessories. It was a real reflection on the family. Mm -hmm. And if you don't believe it, all you have to do, what I just said is, all you have to do is go back and look at art and think, how could a, a, a family providing a substance for a home, how could, how could they ever afford 30 yards of fabric for a dress? Mm -hmm. So it was, it was a real reflection. So I think that that's why we see so much, and Ruby Lane is a wonderful place to find embroideries and needlepoints and handmade lace. Those are the things that they were doing in those parlors. But while they were doing it, it was decorative. You know, I can work in a mess, but if I have a choice, I'd rather work in a nice environment. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the, the last things I want to show to you are some of my favorite kinds of items, and that's shell art. 
and um, the French call it coquillage, but it's shell art. And if you lived in many places in the world, you've never seen the, in the 19th century, you've never seen the beach, you've never seen the ocean, you haven't seen any of those. It's just a magical thing. And I think everyone knows Shell Oil Company. Mm -hmm. Shell Oil Company started out as a shell company selling shells, oh. which some of these shells on these items are probably from distributed by Shell Oil. The Shell Company. Oh, so, so amazing. You know, the, the, a lot of these items, too, you know, they, they would make, like, this isn't meant to be a, a miniature etagere, and they would arrange all the, the shells, and then they'd shellac them, which gives them that kind of yellowish appeal. And they also created shell dolls. And here's a phenomenal little shell grotto get with a china. Here, I can. There we go. Um, a shell a grotto with, with a, a china, china china with her little baby oh, and she's that. in a shell grotto and these are like delicate wonderful little shells and they're just they're intact that yes. is so incredible yes but this was a very special thing mm -hmm. and uh, 1925 my grandmother who lived in Wyoming she hopped a, a train to California because she wanted to see the ocean and to them, that was just an incredible marvel. To, it was unbelievable to see the ocean. And they made just about anything you can think of, they would uh, adorn with shells, not just dolls, but picture frames and furniture and mirrors and you name it, it was uh, shells were used. These picture frames are just incredible. Yeah. It almost reminds me of tramp art in a way. But in it's... a way, it is, it is tramp art, but a lot of it was to be perfectly honest, that it was uh, cheap souvenirs, mm -hmm. seaside souvenirs. You can find all kinds of wonderful things from, uh, there are even uh, shell pieces from Monterey, um, you know, that they were selling in the 19th century to tourists. So it was really a tourist thing. It's a fun thing to collect. It is a fun thing. It, it, it's whimsies. It's a wonderful name for them because it is a whimsical thing to yes. collect. Yes. And, and, you know, you could say that, okay, maybe it's not in good taste, but you know what? It has a, um, a charm to it. And sometimes that is really just a very special mm -hmm. thing to just have a whimsical charm, um, it's happy. A happiness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And all of these things, they're meant to delight people. And that's, that's the whole point of it. Because, you know, they didn't have constant entertainment. They didn't have YouTube mm -hmm. and Ruby Lane Live. <laughs> they didn't <laughs> they, have dolly cams They back didn't then. have dolly cams then. <laughs> <laughs> but if they had it, they'd love it. Well, isn't it just wonderful, though, that here we are, 100, 150 years later, even earlier, and these items are still delighting us just as much. Yes, and you know what? Much. I mean, it's, it's a, a, a fun thing to collect this kind of item, and it's uh, they're available. You know, the, of course, some of the doll things here I've showed you are a little harder to get, but a lot of things like these shell pieces, they're mm -hmm. available. They're, you can go on to Ruby Lane right now and probably buy a lot of things, and I, David and I... Put them in bathrooms, created a nautical oh, a sea Fine. theme mm -hmm. in a bathroom, and it makes a really neat, a, a neat thing. And if you have a Victorian, I mean, I'm appalled by that there are a lot of people that have Victorians homes with nothing in them that that's are Victorian. Victorian exactly. Yeah. I mean, that's the whole point of it. Catherine Peterson just said that they're timeless. Well, yeah, they are is, timeless. Yeah, they are. Yeah, yeah, they're timeless. And again, we just love this painting and, and sure, the painting in the other room. Look yes, we would. Because the painting in the other room is one that we've had a lot of questions about as well. This is just so much. This is a whimsical painting. There's so it much is. movement happening. There's laundry going in the background. There's a broom on the a wall. This child is a very naughty little boy. I mean, and and, and they did not have um, any problem at that period in time with corporal punishment. So whoever, whoever, you know, that I don't know that this, this really could happen. Um, but, you know, it's cute when it's happening. And also, too, I should point out to you because, you know, as you know, we're culture vultures. So we're always out looking at things. A lot of people don't realize that in the 19th century, they had wall-to-wall -wall carpeting. Mm -hmm. a lot, now, 
Not everybody had it. You had to have the money to have it. But look at here. We have wall-to-wall -wall carpeting and then, with a carpet overlaid in okay. front of the fireplace. But they did have wall-to-wall -wall carpeting. And he's got coal all over the floor. He's naughty. He is naughty. It makes you wonder if this child was actually sitting for this photo or if it was the artist's you know, imagination. Well, I mean, I would imagine that this is a rich house. And I would imagine that if he did, the, did this, he would be in trouble and also his governess would be in trouble for this. This would be a double. Or if you were an indulgent parent, which they had them then too, um, this might have been just like hysterically funny. <laughs> but it's a, it's a fantastic painting. And we, we kind of have it for a few reasons because, you know, that we have doll houses and we're very interested in doll houses. So you have your, you know, home decor, but you also have the, the clothing. And this is a little boy. There is no question about that. Um, a lot of people would argue it, but it is a little boy. And he's just, he's just naughty. And of course you can see the newspaper is there, the London, yeah. London, I think it's the London Journal. I don't have my glasses. London on. Journal, mm -hmm. yeah. And Just wonderful. There's a lot of depth in this photo, in this painting rather, because we can see the back room, it goes back all the way like that. Absolutely, and the lace too. And somebody would like to know uh, why, how do we know without question that it's a boy? Because there's certain characteristics about the clothes that um, they wore dresses. They were usually not as elaborate as little girls' dresses, but they were dresses. Mm -hmm. And you can tell by the shoes and the, the, you know, she's got very kind of masculine shoes. I mean, actually, it's a fine line between boy and girl. Mm -hmm. The whole point of that was to, little boys would get kidnapped because they could be taken and put into the workhouse. Mm. That was a, it was a brutal time. So you wanted your, and also to the hair, and you wanted the, um, you wanted the, the children to, for them not to be able to really tell the difference. Okay. But as you kind of do this, you kind of start to, you just feel it, mm -hmm. whether it's a he or a she. A lot of little boys had phenomenal soutache suits, little dresses with soutache covering. And boys, you know, were typically a little bit more naughtier than yes. than the little girls. Yes. So, and they could, well, and I think they could get away with more than little girls. <laughs> and, uh, that is true. Well, this was just spectacular and something that we are thrilled to learn about. It's not something you see every day and a wonderful thing to celebrate and be happy about for our dolls holiday celebration. Michael, thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you, Ruby Lane. We'll see you later this All afternoon. Right. Bye bye. bye, -bye.